But the big story, as we said, there's a wave of protests across the country after news that a Mumbai photojournalist out on assignment with a colleague was gang raped. As we said, my colleagues are joining me on, uh, fr on location for more of this. The story, of course, of a 22-year-old who was interning with a news magazine. She had gone to cover a story at the Shakti Mills uh, location, a deserted spot of the city, when some young men, the sketches of whom the police have made, cornered her and the male colleague. They tied him up and then gang-raped the young girl. The police set up teams and have made one arrest but say they have identified four others involved. They identified them with photojournalist's help who is said to be stable in hospital. The case of course causing major protests across the country. Uh, let's go across to Tejas who is at the location uh, first of the crime. Uh, Tejas, describe to us the area where this incident took place. Well, the Shakti Mills compound is in Mahalakshmi, which is in South Mumbai. And this is a very isolated spot. Uh, if I can show you very briefly, this is the, the, a very old structure, which was, you know, perhaps uh, 100, to, 100 to 150 years old. And it's completely dilapidated, largely abandoned. And therefore, the, the shrubbery and the growth here is completely growing wild here. And many photojournalists do come here because this also has heritage value and therefore they come to take photographs. Now that's exactly why this young 22 year old girl along with a colleague they were here to take photographs and then they were stopped by those two people and then of course that horrific rape happened. Uh, we are told this is the area of course it's no point f uh, figuring out where exactly it happened but you know uh, police have barricaded the entire area but uh, one look at the area itself there is a dividing wall here and then you can see uh, you know shrubbery and uh, you can see wild growth, you can see creepers, you know, completely, you know, covering the entire area of crime itself. So there is no way anybody else, first of all, could have seen. We did ask people all around here if they heard anybody uh, scream. They said no, they did not. Only much later, when actually the police came, they realized that something had gone amiss here. Now, if you go little in this direction, then a little away from here is, is the station itself, the Mahalakshmi station, and then... You can hear, in fact, in the background, the trains passing also. So uh, there is noise here. At the same time, it's absolutely isolated. And it's very possible that nobody could have actually spotted what really happened. So this is uh, where actually this horrific uh, crime took place. Uh, this is in, in South Mumbai itself. What's really surprising and what's shocking, actually, Maya, is this took place at 6.30. So the light you are seeing just now where I'm standing, it's around 4.30. It would be much darker at 6.30, but still, it's still bright enough. It's still, uh, it's still daytime. It's not as, you know, uh, it happens in, in, in isolated and, you know, largely... Uh, abandoned places like we see elsewhere people are passing by about you know about 50 to 100 meters from here the road is there so the question of course is that these people who are who have criminal backgrounds uh, did the police you know make a mistake in not really uh, getting them getting onto them earlier because they have uh, a uh, they are some of them are history cheaters. They have burglary cases against them. That, of course, will be part of the larger investigation. We also will be following that angle. But of course, the entire city of Mumbai and the country absolutely shocked and disgusted by what really happened today. Maya, right? They just stay with us. Let's go across to Miloni as well, who's joining us. Uh, as we said, there are protests taking place all across. Miloni, you're joining us from the protests in Mumbai. Give us a sense of what Mumbaikers are saying this evening. Well, Maya, just about an hour ago, journalists from across the spectrum, print and, me and uh, television, had gathered over here. And their purpose was a silent protest. We all have worn these black armbands. We've come out with uh, placards essentially expressing our anger and our outrage. We were later on joined by a whole host of students. Now, some of these students are from uh, Sophia's. And we're going to ask them, why did they feel compelled to come and be part of the protest? The thing is that we are training journalists and it is appalling to see some, that something like this can happen to the media. And the fact that she's a journalist is a separate issue. More than that, she's a woman. And for any woman or man who respects gender, who thinks that equality is important, I think it is important to come here and show your support instead of sitting at home and being cynical. Why are you here? because I simply wanted to support and um, just we studying media and not acting upon it would be wrong so I'm here to support. Do you feel safe in this city and if not 
what do you think we should do to make it better for us? Definitely these incidents make you question the safety in Mumbai but I think we are not supposed to, I mean we shouldn't get afraid and sit back at home but raise questions, infrastructural changes or other kind of changes that can help us you know walk freely around the city and not just get scared and withdraw into our shells. Any one of you think after whatever has happened to this young photojournalist when she went out on an assignment, does that make you question your career choice? No, not really, because I myself want to get into photojournalism in a way and uh, I don't think it should be affecting anybody's career or profession choice because it's, it's a matter of security and thinking and point of view. It's not about career. If you allow this to affect your career choice, it means you're giving in, it means you're defeated and nobody here is defeated. If they were defeated, they wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be here. In fact, for me, to wanting to be a journalist, this makes me more angry and this makes me want to go out and do more activism and be more vocal about it. So basically this makes you want to speak up and just not stay silent and accept uh, what is happening. Why are you here? It's because I am a budding media person. I'm By next year I'll be a journalist too maybe. So I, would I want to face the same situation? It's not about just me, it's about all the women here. We are all here to support her because she doesn't deserve to be there and it's not just about her it's as I said it's all about all women yeah it's about because all of us every human being because like we call it it's a human issue so no man no woman no child nobody ever deserves to be raped or harassed in such a way and it's it's it goes against the right of equality more than anything else